let's compute the integral of sine ln x dx. So this one is a fun one because you get to use a lot of ideas all at once. Um, so let's just get into it. Now, I have a function within a function, so my instinct is to do some sort of substitution. So I'm going to define a variable t as my inner function ln x. And so I have dt is equal to the derivative of log of x, which is 1, of, 1 over x dx. And now I want this to match what I have, in, what I have present in my integral. So I have x dt is equal to dx. So using my, my properties of log, I can define x as e to the t. So now I can rewrite my integral in terms of the new variable t. So it becomes the integral of e to the t times sine t dt. And now this might seem a little more familiar. This is going to be a integration by parts problem from now on. And the way we choose, because this is in the form um, u dv. And so now we have to determine what is u and what is dv. And the way to determine this is by using this ac acronym for what the priority of who gets to be u. And L stands for logarithms, I stands for the inverse trig functions, A stands for algebraic functions, and T stands for trig, and E is exponents. So in that case, U is going to be sine T, and therefore DU is cosine T dt, and then DV is E to the T dt, and V is the integral of E to the T dt, which is just e to the t because it's an exponent. And now we rewrite our integral using the definition for integration by parts where if I have an integral in the form u dv, then it becomes uv minus the integral of v du. And that's just definition of integration by parts. So plugging everything in, we get um, e to the t sine t minus the integral of e to the t cosine t dt and of course this is equal to the integral of e to the t sine t dt and now you should already realize that there is going to be some sort of repetition because if you look at these two integrals they're basically the same thing but that might not be that obvious because you have a cosine versus a sine but essentially it'll lead you to the same result so let's let's compute this integral, which is very similar to what we just did. So again, in another integration by parts, we have an exponent and we have a trigonometric function, so the rules of the u priority is the same. So u is cosine t, du is negative sine t dt, uh, dv is e to the t dt, and again, v is e to the t and now plugging this all back into the definition of integration by parts and leaving this e to the t sine t term outside. So this becomes um, e to the t cosine t um, minus, and a minus makes a plus, the integral of e to the t sine t dt is all equal to the integral of e to the t sine t dt. And now you should see what I meant by the repetition. So all I did is go back to where I started from. So what do I do now? Well, I have e to the t sine t, the integral of e to the t sine t dt present on both sides. So you could think about this as a variable you're trying to solve for. So if you name this whole integral, um, if you name it y, the whole integral term, you're basically solving for y to be able to define what the result is. So what I mean by this is I will be isolating this integral term. So distributing that negative, um, I just get that. So now I can move this integral term to the other side 
and I get um, e to the t sine t minus e to the t cosine t is equal to two copies of the for, of the integral e to the t sine t dt. And now to is fully isolate the integral term, I divide by two on both sides. And so my integral e to the t sine t dt is equal to e to the t sine t minus e to the t cosine t divided by two. So it's a different way of finding the result of the integral, but it works. And now we're not done because we started with the integral in terms of the variable x, so we have to go back and rewrite everything with respect to x. So remember how we defined t as log x, so I have to replace all my t terms with um, log x, or the fact that we said x is equal to e to the t, that also makes things easier, so the whole integral is equal to x sine log x minus x cosine log x all over 2, and we can't forget the arbitrary constant, plus c, and that's it.